Ecuador kicked off the World Cup with a very convincing win over the host Qatar. It was a 2-0 win. Very impressive performance by Ecuador. And today, we are going to be breaking down the tactic. We're going to do a little tactical analysis. We're going to have the football manager tactic. But also, we are going to be playing a game in the World Cup, but obviously in football manager. So, without the further hold up, let's get stuck in to this tactic. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new, my name is RDF Tactics, and today we are going to be breaking down Ekidos tactics from their 2 0 win in the World Cup opening game against the hosts, Qatar. We do have a tactical analysis from last night's game, then we're going to break down the tactic in Football Manager, but we're also going to play a game in Football Manager as well. We started the World Cup with Ecuador. We we, spoiler alert, we didn't get far with Ecuador, but we do have a game to play so I can show you guys the tactics, but we didn't just test it in the World Cup. We also managed in Ecuador with a very good side and we played a whole season to see how the tactic will play out. And again, spoiler alert, very good, very good. <laughs> So if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you are. If you are already, make sure you have that notification bell turned on so you never miss a video throughout this World Cup with me posting regular World Cup tactics. Also like this video, that's going to help this video and this channel grow massively. That will be hugely appreciated, but also in the comment section, just leave any comments again, helping the algorithm. Did you agree with my tactics? Did you disagree? What did you disagree about it? And what could I have done better? But for now, but for now, no more hold up. Let's get stuck in. Ecuador changed their shape from their usual 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 to a 4-4-2, where Enna Valencia and Michael Estrada really did a great job with dynamic and constant movements going wide and dropping deep to help their team progress. The midfield line formed of Romario Ibarra over the left, Moises Casado and Mendes as the double pivot and Gonzalo Plata on the right wing. One of the clearest sights inside Ecuador's system is how intense they were when the ball was played through the middle. They exchange quite often the mid block to a high pressing. However, their pressing structure is totally set up to make midfielders pull triggers in the most aggressive ways. Their 4 4 2 shape turned into a 4 3 3 with one of the wingers on the strong side of the ball advancing some meters to join the forward line to then form a narrow front three up front. As we can see in the state of this of Ecuador's defensive territory, it shows an exact positioning of when they were biting with the pressure and waiting to win the ball around the halfway line. Ecuador blocked all the pass through the middle to force them to play long balls in case Qatar didn't find a way through and they were basically doing that during the majority of the match as they were stunned by Ecuador's game. Moises Casado and Mendes were also very coordinated and intelligent to leave a little distance between them if something didn't go as planned. They were still as narrow and trying to close all lines possible. Ecuador had a very simple on the ball dynamic that started with Mendes's movements who would step back from the midfield and join the back four to then form a back three. This automatically generated a numerical overload with a three versus two against the centre forward partnership from Qatar. As Mendes would drop deep, Moises Casado stayed between the two strikers, but this also had sense as Brighton's midfielder would look to pin them narrowly to make space for the centre backs who push wide to receive with space and play with their full backs or break through the lines. In front of the fullbacks, both wingers played more inverted, especially the right winger as a 10, and fullbacks moved forward as wingbacks with movements from Estrada and Valencia too to the outside or centrally. When Ecuador set up in the middle third, both wingers started to show off their abilities. They were super dynamic, especially the right winger to receive the ball and drive from one side to another, but also receiving the ball behind Qatar's midfield line, where they had plenty of room to roam. The Ecuador manager said in his post-match conference that they had been working on attacking transitions during the past 15 days. I told them that after winning the ball back, they will need to play one or two touches to finish play. That's exactly how Ecuador scored both their goals on the night and also created several chances through this tactical setup. The tactical analysis was written by Brian Marquise, which you can find over on Total Football Analysis. The link will be in the description below. But for now, we're going to go into Football Manager manager to look at the tactic that I created for Ecuador.
So to show you guys how the tactic or if the tactic even works in the Ecuadorian top division, you can see that we topped the league. We played 30, we won 27. We didn't draw a single game throughout the whole season and we lost three. Looking at the player stats, our strikers, the two top goal scorers, one scoring 21, the other scoring 19 for the average rating. The top three are our players for the top assists out of the top three two are our players looking at the man of the match awards our striker with seven man of the match awards and the clean sheets our goalkeeper with 17 clean sheets throughout the whole season looking at possession gained as well because we are supposed to be set up in a mid block and we can see here we gain most possession just before the halfway line and we gain more possession or we got more possession gains than the average in the league. Tackling as well. Tackling is going to be very, very important for this tactic. And you can see with the tackles one ratio, we are performing above the league's average, but also for the tackles attempted per game. Again, we are performing above the league's average. So when it comes to tackling, we are very strong in that department. And just looking at the general performance from our team during the season, we've got 2.24 goals per game, which is of course way above the league's average. We were getting around 16.44 shots per game 42% of our shots were on target as well so we were very very good going forward and again you can see with the tackles one ratio 76% tackles one ratio but now let's look at the tactic so here is a tactic it's a 4-4-2 obviously with one of our central midfielders dropped into that dm position and the main reason why i wanted this to happen was because you would notice as well in the um pass map if we just look at the pass map quickly number 20 he is one of the central midfielders and you would notice he dropped so so deep i mean we could have technically given this guy a halfback in football manager but i also felt that i wanted to get his physical attributes out of him as well because the two central midfielders for Ecuador were they were running the show they were running the show i felt that a halfback it would kind of drop deep but out of possession he's not as aggressive as a ball winning midfielder to try and kind of replicate the um defensive midfielder dropping deep to receive the ball i have added play out from the defense but also when we are distributing the ball my goalkeeper is aiming for that halfback so we are really trying to get well not that halfback that defensive midfielder so we really are trying to get that defensive midfielder to drop deep to try and create that free at the back and then we can have that numerical advantage three versus one or three versus two depending on how the ai have set up so for the mentality the reason why i went with cautious if we read it it aims to keep men behind the ball when defending but to provide quick support to attacking players when the ball is in the final third so now i wanted to get that mid block so i really wanted to emphasize on that mid block and players dropping deep kind of behind when their ai or when the opposing team are playing with the ball behind or with the um, back line I really wanted to emphasize our team shape dropping deep and getting players or men behind the ball and this is how we can set up our trap and we can kind of force them in the middle and that is when we can press intensely and aim to win the ball back and then break on our counter attack so naturally the passing directness on a cautious mentality is going to be fairly direct it does say standard but standard is just matching the team's mentality and I find that on cautious mentality the passing directness is it's fairly direct so we didn't necessarily need to go more direct than that so you can see if i um, just press it slightly to the right it's now a more direct rather than slightly direct so i believe on standard it's already at slightly direct and then if you just knock it to the side by one you've got more direct attacking width fairly wide so when we are building up we can really focus on getting the ball out in those wider areas the center backs pulling out wide the full backs pushing up as well and uh, well that is what's happened for ecuador in real life and that is what we want to try and attempt but also the center backs as well when they do have the ball and then when they play the direct passes they don't play the direct passes down the middle they often aim out into those wider areas or if the wingers are in that half space if they have moved narrow then the center backs try and play that breaking line pass straight into the um, winger's feet so that's again another reason why i've gone with fairly wide the tempo slightly higher so the players are operating with a quicker tempo in the second half this dropped very very noticeably for ecuador i did feel in the second half they kind of took the foot of the gas bear in mind it was the first game of a group stage we've got two more games to play that is possibly a reason why i've already explained why we are using play out from the back as well in transition ecuador were the masters of the second balls and in order to achieve that in football manager you may have to counter press so we are using counter press but also when possession has been won we are going to counter attack distribution when the goalkeeper's got the ball again he is aiming for that halfback now lastly 
out of possession we are using a mid block so again we are sort of inviting pressure not too much pressure our defensive line is higher so we've kind of closed the gap we've closed those lines in the middle making it really really difficult to play through the trigger press is set to much more often tackling get stuck in and for the defensive line step up again really emphasizing and closing those gaps and biting trying to bite in that mid block get the ball back and then boom break for our team so that there is the team instructions for the player roles well we've kind of got the uh the players territories of control and this is what i've used to kind of work out the player role so we can see the fullbacks aren't necessarily that aggressive so in football manager i do have both of them on wing back but on automatic now speaking of the dm we can see in this map as well mendez is one of the dms playing alongside casado and you can see how deep he was in control he often often dropped very very deep often making it a back three with casado kind of being that one man in midfield in possession you can see the amount of area that plato is covering valencia the two strikers the two strikers up top as well covering a lot of ground for Ecuador. Now, looking at the player roles that we've chosen, both fullbacks are wingbacks on automatic. We do have a ball playing defender on the left hand side. He's going to be staying wider. And then we've got a no nonsense centre back on the right hand side. And he, again, is staying wider. The no nonsense defender, I kind of I kind of like him on this game. I like the fact that he plays more direct passes as well. So he's just going to be focusing on getting the ball further forward. In DM, we do have a ball winning midfielder, Mark and Titer, and a box to box midfielder, also Mark and Titer, but dribbling more and taking more risks, being our creative outlet in central midfield. On the left hand side, we do have an inverted winger on support. On the right hand side, again, another inverted winger, but this time on attack. Up top, we do have a deep line forward. I feel that Estrada was playing really nicely, dropping deep in order to receive possession. Again, staying wider, trying to emphasize in those wider overloads. And for the advanced forward, Enna Valencia, again, stay wider. They weren't stationary, just in that central area. Sometimes they moved out to go in or they were in and then moved out to create space for Ecuador in their attack. And that there wraps up the tactic in football manager it's a 442 sort of you could say a 4132 but it is a 442 especially in practice and well what we're going to do now is play a game to see how it plays out so let's load up a game So our game is against Senegal. Funny enough, we already beaten Qatar. That was our first game in the group stage and we smashed them 4-0. Michael Estrada scoring a hat-trick. We did lose 1-0 to the Netherlands though. So this World Cup is actually a very, very important game. So let's get stuck into it. This will be our starting lineup. Of course, I couldn't replicate the exact starting 11 from yesterday's game. So let's get stuck into this tactic or this match even. <laughs> I almost forgot as well opposition instruction so every player in central midfield for the opponents obviously will have tighter marking trigger press and get stuck in on them so that's defensive midfielder central midfield and attacking midfield all central positions here we are the world cup lineups i mean they're playing a 3-4-1-2 bit of a cheat because Mane's injured we don't really care about that though and here is ecuador's lineup it is our 4-4 two let's go Ecuador we are second we really need at least a point from this game a win will be absolutely fantastic so let's get stuck in so here's Mendy with a free kick for Senegal and Koulibaly heads the ball over here's Dominguez now it's on the boa so we're trying to build up with that uh three at the back sort of and then we've got our two fullbacks pushing ahead with our one in central midfield here's Brian Castillo plays it to Plata Plata cuts inside, looking for Moses Casado. Now he's got the ball. He's going to drive forward. Plays a lovely ball to uh, Valencia. He's going to pull it back. Plata, oh, almost reaches Plata. Here's Castillo. He plays it into Naboa. He's going to have a crack, maybe. No, he doesn't. Here's Castillo. Out wide. We can put the ball in, though. We can put the ball into the... Maybe not. Here's Co Casado. Plata. And it's 1-0 to Ecuador, though. That might be offside. No. 
No, it's not even going to VAR. It's a goal. <laughs> it's a goal. Lovely play here by Ecuador. And Boa on the ball. Plays it back to Casado. He smashes it. Mendy's got to do better with his handling. And it falls to Plata. He just taps it in. 1-0 to Ecuador. It's Mendy. They've got another free kick. They've got so many players at the back post. Why there's so many players free? Here's Moses Casado though. Plata. Here's Ecuador on the break. And Gulo. Oh, he's, that's poor from Angulo, but he's won the ball back. He's won the ball back. He's going to drive towards the box. And that's Torre possibly sent off here for Senegal. Possibly. The ref has called him over. He's in his hands in his pocket. And there it is. Second yellow card. It was a really silly tackle there. Really sick attack. I mean, he's got butts in the first minute, then butts in the 13th. It's not a good day for him. It's not a good day for him. And it could be a very long day for Senegal. His Noboa with a free kick whips it into the box and it's headed out by Senegal. Plata on the ball now. Plays it out wide to Noboa. Noboa into Casado. Plays it back to the Brian fullback. Here's Rojas now. He's going to drive towards that byline. Oh, he's whipped it in. Valencia, oh! It's almost, it's almost the similar goal to yesterday um, with his header as well. Almost. Here's Mendy with the ball. Coyote. I mean, they've got less options now to find. His Kudabali kicks it long. Hopefully we win that. No, we don't, but we win the second ball. Here's the centre-back on the ball. Naboa plays it over the top, looking for Valencia, but has good tracking back there. Oh, he's lost the ball, though. Valencia, he's got to be scoring. Valencia, you've got to be scoring that. So we are at half-time. It's Senegal nil, Ecuador one, and the boys are out for the second half. Come on. Come on, you Ecuadorians. Here's the Brighton fullback with a throw-in. He's going to... That's just silly, though. Like, there's literally two players here and the guy coming short, and you've literally just thrown it long to no one. That was really silly. If they score from this, that's going to wind me up. Don't score from this, please, FM. That's ours all day. Maybe not. Here's Mendy on the ball. Kicks it out to Diata. He's almost intercepted it there. Here's Diata cutting inside. Koulibaly. Ball's into Mendy now. Back to Koulibaly. He kicks it long. Over the top, we should be intercepting that. Yes, we do. Here's Rojas now. With the ball. Here comes Ecuador breaking. Here's the counter-attack. Rojas just running down the byline. Or running towards the ball. Like, Roja, you should, again, very, very bad decision making. It started off with the throw in. And then the, the decision to shoot there was absolutely ridiculous. Valencia is knackered up top. So we are going to sub him and bring on another Angulo. We've got two Angulos up top. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Here's Saar with a corner in the last minute. We head the ball out, but it's going to Saar now. I've got a feeling they're going to score, you know. I've got a feeling they're going to score. Or can we break here? Oh, it's so with the ball. Loom in midfield, plays it back to Koulibaly. All Ecuador need here is a point. He plays it over the top to Sa. Casado wins the ball though. And this is an opportunity now for Ecuador to go on the break. It's in the last minute. Players are running forward. They don't need to. But we haven't changed anything to stop that. Here's Castillo now. Don't shoot. He's going to shoot, ain't he? He's going to shoot, obviously. Why? I thought that was in. I can't lie to you guys. Kicks it long. Angulo wins the ball. Here's Casado looking for Plata over the top. It's, no, Plata doesn't get there. Diallo intercepts. He kicks it long. And there should be winners in midfield there. There's absolutely nobody in midfield. There should be bodies there. And this might just be the end of the game. Here's the fullback. Kicks it long. Yeah, I believe this is the end of the game here. If I speed it up. Yep. That was the end of the game. Ecuador, you can see the dominant side. Um, Senegal went a man down earlier in the game, but we were already 1-0 up by that point. Unfortunately, that wraps up today's video in the World Cup. We did make it out of the group stage, but then England, who are possibly the tournament's favourites, knocked us out in the second round with a 3-0 win to England. Over in Ecuador, in the, um, well, the league, the top tier in Ecuador, we did win the league very, very comfortably. So the tactic, it's a very decent one you can try it out if you want but this is the Ecuador 442 World Cup tactic that was used yesterday in the World Cup opening game against Qatar I will see you guys soon stay safe God bless peace out Mwah.